Hello friends. In this video, I will show how you can use the basic CRUD operations to develop a simple application in PHP. We know that CRUD stands for create, read, update and delete. And these are related to SQL commands, insert, select, update and delete. If you see in this application, there is a list of users displayed in an HTML table. And for each user, there is an update and delete buttons. You can add user using add user. If you click add user, add user form is displayed. You can add a user here. Click on submit. So user added successfully message is given. You can see in the list the name is added here. So you can click on update. Click on submit and it is updated. You can click on delete. It is asking for a confirmation. OK. And user is deleted and message is displayed here. So all the four CRUD operations are done in this application. So let us develop this application using PHP and MySQL. So I am in XAMPP htdocs folder. And here I will create a new folder. CRUD. So I go to this folder and type cmd and in the common prompt I type code dot. So it will open the project in Visual Studio Code. If you do not have VS Code installed, you can download it from code.visualstudio.com slash download and install it. First we will create add user form. So let us create a new file addusr.php. Type HTML5. So we'll use booster 5 CDN. So here you will see booster 5 CSS. So this is for booster 5. Copy this and paste it here. We will create a CSS folder and then a style.css. New file style.css. So we will add all the styles in this file. Go to add user, add a container div h1. So this will be the create operation of the CRUD. We will add a form. We are keeping action as blank. We will write the PHP code in this file only. Use booster 5 input. So in this form we will use name, email and the address of the user. So this is for the name field. Let us remove this, remove this and instead we will add a div here to display the validation error message. Give class as text danger. So just copy this and this would be for the email. And then we will add a text area for address field. And then add the div for the validation error message. And then we will add a submit button. Give a name. So if we run this now, localhost crad and then we give add user. So the form is displayed. So we need to give some style here. Go to style.css. And for the form also we will add some style. Let us give a border. 
let us give black for the time being we'll give a padding we'll change the color here we will make the label bold so here we will add a class font weight bold just add that for email and address also so our form design is ready so this is just a static html form we have not added any php code or any database yet so now let us go to the database and create our table just make sure your apache and mysql services are running in xam control panel so we will use the test database we will create the table name users id name email and address id is integer name is varchar email varchar address varchar 255 create the table make this primary key id should be primary and then change it to auto increment so table is created now we'll create a database connection php script we'll create a new folder here cfg for configuration we'll create dbconnect.php in this folder so this will be used to connect to the database so we'll use a variable dollar connect we'll use new mysqli to create an instance of mysqli and we'll use four parameters here one is server and user id and then password and the database name now we have to give the value for these four parameters we'll use localhost then user id we'll use the root user default user and then give the password there is no password for the root user and database name test so we'll check for the error if there is any error we'll use die and give a message else give the message connection successful so we'll just test whether the database connection is working correctly or not we have to use crud cfg and dbconnect.php so it's saying connection successful so our connection script is working fine and now we don't need this so we'll use this dbconnect.php in other programs so we'll just include it in the other programs where we need to connect to the database so i'll go back to add user and what i'll do i'll just i'll cut the top section before the body tag and paste it in a new file header.php so that i can use it for other program also so i'll just create a new file header.php and paste it here save it and in the add user just include this header.php and we'll also include dbconnect.php so if you run it now add user.php so now we have to write the php code when the form is submitted if you see there is a submit button here and the name is submit so we'll check if the form is submitted we are using post method so you are using dollar underscore post submit which means when the submit button is clicked we have to do the form validation so if you see the form so we need to check whether the values are entered in the fields or not so we'll do that validation first we'll get the values from the form dollar post name so we'll use a trim function here and then just copy this name and then email 
and then address. So we have got the values from the form and now we will check if they are empty or not. If, if name is empty, we will give a validation error message name error equal to enter name. Then we will use an error flag which will be true. Once there is any validation error, we will use error flag as true and initialize this as false. So let us initialize this as false. Initially there is no error and when there is any validation error, it will become true. So we'll just copy this and let us do the address validation first and then we will do the email validation because we have multiple validation for the email. So let us give this address and now we will check for the email also. So if you run it now let us refresh this and click on submit button. There is nothing displayed here because we have not displayed the error message. So we have to display the error message now for each input field. We have added this for our validation error message. So now we will print that. This would be name error. Similarly, we just add this for email and address. So let us refresh now and test and now it is saying it's not defined. So we have to define these variables. So just refresh this and click on submit button. So it is displayed now. These are the validation message. So these validations are working fine. Now we will do additional validation for the email email format and check for duplicate email. So we will do that now. We will add two validations for the email. One is format of the email and other is duplicate email. So here you add else if we will use a filter where function dollar email and give a filter validate uh, email filter and you have to give this as negation of this because we are checking whether it is validate it is valid email or not. So in case invalid email format, we have to give the message. So that is why you are using not filter where. Copy this and here email format is not valid. And then else check for duplicate. So here we will write an SQL statement get the details from the users table and check whether this email already exists or not. So we will use the select statement here. Email equal to give a question mark and we will use prepare statement. Let us give dollar statement equal to. Now if you go to dbconnect.php we are using dollar connect as the connection handler. So we will use this dollar connect prepare and give the SQL statement. We are using one parameter here, email parameter, so you have to bind the parameter. Now here email is the string, so we have to give a single S here. So bind parameter is run and then execute the statement. One statement is executed, we have to get the result. Let us take result equal to get result. Now if there is any row returned by this SQL statement that means email ID already exists in the database. So we will check for that if dollar result num rows greater than 0 which means email ID already exists. So then we will give the message saying email ID already exists. Email already exists and make error flag as true. We have not added any users yet. We will test it later. So just run this and see. Click on submit. Okay. We can validate 
the email format just give test and click on it you can see email format is not valid now one thing we have to do if there is any validation error we want to retain the value in the form so we have to give the value attribute in the form name and add a value name and add this for email also and for the text area also we have to do that so for text area we are not using any value so we have to just give the address so if you now refresh it now we have to initialize this variables as well so dollar name email refresh it now give test give name submit you can see the name is displayed here test is displayed here and it's showing the validation error message so we are fine with the validations so now once all the validations are successful we can insert the row in the users table initially error flag is false so if there is no validation error error flag will remain false if not error flag that means there is no validation error validations are successful so we can go ahead and insert the row in the database let us write the sql statement this will be an insert statement in the users table now see the columns for the users table name email and address values give three question mark here now while inserting row in the database there could be some error so we'll use it try catch here we'll use the prepare statement and now we have to bind the parameter there are three parameters here so all these three name email and address these are all strings so we give sss name email and address now execute so once successfully executed we have to display the message let us just give echo we'll change it later so for the time being i am using echo here and if there is any error we'll just display the error exception okay so now let us try to insert a row in the users table so we'll refresh it so you can see it is showing user added successfully so add user or create user is working fine now if you want to see the error message just give a name one and try to insert a row click on submit you can see it is saying unknown column name one field list so error message also being displayed here now let us change this so add user is working fine so now we can test the duplicate emails if you see the database it is added so go here give a name and give the same email id and click on submit so it is showing email address already exist so validation for the duplicate emails is working fine so we are done with the create operations for which we have added a new user and also we validated the form and now we will display the users in an html table which will be the read operation now we'll create index.php so new file index.php here we'll use an html table so let us copy this and use it in index.php as well we'll use bootstrap 5 html table bs5 table 
So we'll use table default. So there are four columns in our table. So if you see in the table we have four columns. So there will be five columns here. The four columns from the table and one column for the action update and delete. ID, name, email, address, action. In the table we will use table bordered and we will remove one row here. We will be using PHP for loop anyway. So let us run that. So since we are using index.php we will just give localhost crud. So let us give heading. We will give a div. Give a h1. So this is our read operation. Refresh it. Let us give a class here. Table dark and style. Let us add margin. So this is a static HTML table now. We'll write SQL statement to get the data from the user's table and display them in the HTML table. So Index.php. So we'll write the SQL statement. Execute it and then get the result. And now we'll use a for loop here so that we can repeat this table row. First check if there is any row returned by the SQL statement. So we'll use if numbers greater than zero. Then use a for each loop. So within this for each loop, we'll use this table row. So just cut this and use this table row within the for each loop and then close it. In case there are no rows in the users table, so we have to give the else statement here. Else. So in that case, we'll just display no users to display. We have to display the values here. Now the last column is action. So we'll just remove this now. We don't want to display right now. We'll keep it blank as of now. So this will be ID, name, email and address. So basically we are getting all the data from the users table and then in an HTML table we are displaying them using a for each loop. Let us now test it, refresh it. So you can see data is coming here. So there is one row in the table, only one row so far and the row is displayed here. So now what we'll do, we'll add a button here for the add user. Add a button, give a href equal to add user dot php. Refresh it, you can see add user is coming here add a class here, margin bottom. If you click add user, so add user form is displayed now. And here we will add a cancel button. Go to add user. This is the submit button. Add a cancel button also. Use index.php in case the form is cancelled. Refresh it, click on cancel. So it's coming here. Add user. Now let us add another user. Click 
click on submit user added successfully if you go to the database there are two rows now this message is displayed in the same form instead we'll display the message in the index.php and redirect the user to the index.php so let us change that if you cancel it now you can see there are two rows go to add user now since we are generating the user message here in the add user.php and we want to display it in index.php so we'll use this message in a session variable so this is the message let us add this message in the session so that we can display this in index.php also let us give success message user added successfully and in case of error we want to display the error message in the same form only so what we will do here instead of echoing here we will give a variable error message is equal to this and now we want to display this success message and error message success message will be displayed in index.php and error message will be displaying in this same form only so let us first do that add the error message if not empty dollar error message we'll use bootstrap alert to display the error message give alert danger and display the message so error message is displayed in the same way we'll display the success message also but it will be displayed in the index.php let us add this just before the table success message in the session variable so we have to use the session here is set dollar session success message since we are using dollar session we need to add session start in the uh, index.php as well as add user.php so since we are using a header here so we'll just add it in the header.php instead of adding it in individual file so go to header and here add session start so let us test it now index.php add user add a new user here click on submit okay the message is not displayed so let's see what is the problem we need to redirect the user to the home page that is index.php so we'll use header so we added the success message in the session variable then redirecting the user to the index page or home page and in index page we are displaying the success message so it should work now let's see let's see in the database whether it is added or not it is already added now if you try to submit again what is happening let's see email id already exist so let us change the email id submit user added successfully now we want to give it in green color not in red so we have to change that class go to index.php here change it to success refresh it so now it is fine once we are displaying the session message we need to unset it so that it does not retain the value in the session variable now if you refresh it it should go away click add user again click on submit user added successfully you can see all the users are displayed here so create and read operations are done they are working fine so now we will add action here for update and delete we go to index.php this is the action column so here we kept it blank so now we will add two buttons here for update and delete let us give the name upd user.php
you refresh it so update button is there similarly we just add delete button also and let us give the name as del user.php and change it to btn danger so update and delete so we'll work on the update first so when we are calling upd user.php we need to send a parameter and we'll send id as the parameter We'll send the same parameter for delete user also. Here we have to give dollar row. Now let's work on the update first. Let us create the new file and copy everything from add user.php to upd user.php. Now first of all, let us change the heading update so if we just refresh it and click on update so it is showing the update form and we need to display the values here if we are selecting for the first row the values should be displayed under the fields in this update form so let us work on that so first we'll check if we got the parameter as id so if it's set dollar request id we get the id value in a variable dollar id and then we will query the database to get the details for this id so, where id equal to give question mark dollar statement equal to dollar connect prepare dollar sql and we need to bind the parameter and we have id so id as an integer so we give i for integer and dollar id and then execute so once it is executed we need to get the data so let us give result dollar statement get result if number of rows greater than zero then dollar row equal to result fetch associate get the values for the different fields dollar row name email and address and here the column name is address so we got the values we have already displayed in the form if you see in the form we have a value attribute so let us refresh it we can see the values are displayed now update displayed so the values are displayed since we are updating the values we need to give a hidden field here give type equal to hidden for the id name equal to id because we don't want to show the id and this id field will also be submitted along with the form and we'll update the details for that id so our form is okay we don't have to change anything in the form now so all we'll be doing now when the form is submitted we just add another field here for the hidden field give it this id so we got the id name email and address and the validation all the validation would be applicable for add user as well as update user only thing we have to change here when we are checking the duplicate email we have to give another condition here where email equal to this and an id not equal to question mark we have to check whether the email id does not exist for uh, another user so that is why we have to add this id not equal to question mark so in this case bind parameter we have to add i and then give dollar id validations are fine and in this case instead of insert statement we'll write the update statement so let us remove this and write the update statement set name equal to question mark email equal to question mark address equal to question mark where id equal to question mark and now we have four parameters here so in the bind parameter we have to give 
name email address all these are string and id is integer so we just add i here and then give dollar id once the update statement is successful we just give updated user updated successfully and redirect to the home page so let us just run it and see refresh it so let us update the first first row click on update so just to check click on submit email id already exist so there is some problem so in the input hidden we need to give the value here value equal to we need to give dollar id so there is no value given in the hidden field so it should work now so let us now check again click on update give updated click on submit so user updated successfully you can see the name is updated let us update the email id which actually belongs to a different user so let us see we give a different email id here now let's see submit so this is fine and let us give this email id click on submit updated successfully give a different email id submit email id is updated update the address also submit address is also updated so if you see the database you can see database it is updated so during update if someone changes this url suppose if someone gives different id so it gives an empty form or if someone gives just update user.php without giving any parameter so in that case it gives error so we want to avoid this situations so in that case we will just redirect user to the home page so in update user.php in case request id is not set or if there is no rows found for the corresponding id we just need to take care of this so we just add else statement here and redirect user to the home page so just copy this and paste it here so if you see the if statement here if there is no rows found corresponding to the id and if request id is not set for both these cases we will redirect user to the home page so now if you check so just give a different id so it goes to index.php similarly if you remove this enter so it goes to index.php so we are able to update the user so now we'll go for the delete go to index.php we are calling del user.php with parameter id we want to add a confirmation here on click equal to return confirm so we are adding a confirmation here r t u r n return confirmation and then we will add a new file delete user.php now if we refresh it and click on delete so it is asking the confirmation for deletion are you sure you want to delete the user we can add the name of the user also here let us give dollar name and in the name name equal to so refresh click on delete so the name is so name is not coming here so php echo refresh it so you can see it is showing the name also now let us write the code for the delete user now we'll check 
if is set the request id then only we will go for delete we will write the delete statement bind the parameter now id is integer so give i and we will use dollar id here execute now once delete is successfully here also we will add a message in the session variable and then we will redirect the user to the home page since we are using session here so we need to add the session start we are not using header.php here because we are not using any form so we have to write the session start separately in this delete user.php so now refresh click on delete this is the first user okay it says variable dollar connect so the reason is that we have not included db connect.php so let us add that just copy this now we'll go back here refresh click on delete okay use that deleter successfully now if you see in the database we deleted this one so let us refresh it so it is gone click on delete again deleted delete everything see in the database it's empty now and it says no user to display so we'll just add a column span here we have 1 2 3 4 5 columns 5 we have to add body tag here refresh so no users to display so delete is working so if you add another user user added you can see it's added see in the database there is one row here click on update let us update the address submit user updated successfully click on delete okay user deleted successfully check in the database it's gone so we have completed all the four operations of crud create read update and delete you can visit my website codehowto.com and read this topic in detail with development steps you can download the source code from here please see the description below for all the related links hope this will be useful to you please give a like share it with your friends and colleagues and subscribe to my channel thank you